So guys, I'm going to do a uh, little explanation on casting reels because I see they're taking off in the UK pretty quickly. Um, a lot of guys are using them, a lot of questions online. You know, I've seen on the Facebook pages I still follow. You know, there's a lot of interest in it, which is cool, man, because they are uh, definitely have their place in, in the lure fishing arsenal. Um, right, start off with, I'd say, a price point. Generally, I'd say buy as expensive as you can afford, you know, like just because I've had my own personal experiences. I've been using these things since I was like 10 years old. I'm now 38, so I've had a fair bit of experience with casting reels, bait casters. Um, the cheaper ones I've always owned have gone uh, the proverbial tits up, uh, and it's usually at the worst time. Usually the first thing to go will be the infinite anti-reverse, which is... You know, it just stops this handle from going back at all, which just gives you a little bit more uh, power in your hook sets, stuff like that. You know, fishing jerk baits, like it's uh, next thing to go is usually the uh, the button to uh, deactivate the brake on the spool and reactivate it. And then, thirdly, the drag is usually the next thing to go. The reason is they just use cheaper components hence the cheaper price points you know I can't speak for it today because I haven't bought an entry-level reel in a long time I'm not saying go out and buy a thousand pound Daiwa Steez or you know the newest Shimano made out of NASA's space rocket material moon off the rock or whatever man but buy as, as expensive as you can I mean I see Todd Burr Mano are doing some great uh, great Great looking Shimano's at the moment for like 80 bucks or something. I'm not using them myself, so I can't really comment on how good or not they are, but I know a few guys out there are using them and they're pretty happy, but you know, you'll only know when you buy it. So yeah, get as expensive as you can. You know, if you're just starting out and you're not sure, you know, get an entry level reel, but generally your life is easier with better components and stuff. I mean, that's not to say you can't upgrade your reel. I mean, if you're into tarting your gear up, which some guys are, I mean, you can swap out bearings and handles for, like, graphite handles to make them lighter, reduce as much weight as you can, get different bearings in there, you know, which, uh, obviously, you have different ABEX, which is kind of speed that the bearing rotates at and how long it rotates. But to me, I want to buy a reel out the box, I'm not a professional fisherman. I don't make money out of it. So I don't need a reel that costs super smooth and easy and gives me that extra couple of meters distance. Because, let's face it, man, we go fishing to enjoy our fishing on the weekend and uh, it's time consuming and it's expensive upgrading stuff. So, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. That's cool. It's just not mine. Yeah, man. So let's, let's move on to maintenance. What you can do is, you know, get a... A good quality oil, because that can also make a difference in uh, how well the thing casts and stuff, because some oils are thicker than others, and you know what I mean? They cause more friction. But uh, one thing I'll say is avoid using grease on any parts you can see, um, especially in there, in that little worm gear. The worm gear is, well, the level wind is what moves the level wind, you know, because um, you put grease in there, sand all the stuff out the river or whatever you're fishing is going to get stuck in there and it's just going to equal nightmare. Um, I'll clean my reels every, I don't know, maybe three times a year. And I'll, by that I mean I'll get a cotton bud and get into all the hard to reach places, clean all the crap off. You know, I'll oil them every now and then. One drop of oil literally is all you need there, a little drop there. I'll remove the spool tension cap and, uh, Put a drop oil in there and with these kinds of reels i mean you can just uh click off the side plate like so there's a little bearing in there i'll put a drop oil on there i'll take the spool out i'll put a little drop oil in there on that bearing and that's it man i don't have the confidence or the skill set really to uh open up this gearbox here there's a lot of little springs and stuff. If you're comfortable doing that, go for it, man. And then that's kind of where all the grease goes is on the gears in there. But I've uh, 
destroyed one too many reels doing that and they're still in bags somewhere and when you're going to store your reel if you're going to store it for any amount of time i do it every time i get home really it's just even on my spinning gear man take that drag all the way back no tension on the gears in there because they can seize up and you know it's not pleasant when you want to go fishing and then your your gear's not working a couple of other things to remember are um or to look at is retrieve ratio you know you get them I think they go up to like almost, I don't know, 931 or something, um, retrieve ratios. And basically what that means is for every complete turn of this handle, this is a 731. Um, it takes in 7.3 inches of line. So you get a 531, which is 5.3 inches or 521. Generally, uh, the faster gear ratio reels what they'll do is they've got a lot more torque so you know obviously you're getting more line in it in one turn so you can get fish away from cover quicker they're great for fast baits like you know rattle traps and um you know the summer when the fish are active and you're just rarely going at it and getting reaction bites they're great but i'll tend to avoid them now in the winter when it's a bit colder because you need to slow down a little bit and i generally feel i i fish pretty quick anyway so I'll stick to a 531 or my ideal all-round reel 631 it's great for you know jigs plastics crankbait spinner baits you name it it's a really good reel uh, good retrieve ratio to go for so bear that in mind I mean that is why you know I, I've been using these things for ages so I have a lot of them and you know I'll pick and choose I'll have three on the boat with me at once all for different techniques or whatever and one more thing to bear in mind is when you're storing these things or, you know, if you're not going to go fishing for a week, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just slack off the, the brake all the way. Because what that does is it releases the tension inside the gearbox here on the gears and the brakes. So, you know, I'll do it with my spinning, spinning stuff as well. Just you have the potential of stuff seizing up because it's been cramped together for so long. But yeah, man, if you look after these, I mean... The, my first casting reel I got was a decent quality Shimano, which, you know, my parents got me when I was 10. Um, I still have that reel it's back in South Africa, but I used it up until, sheesh, what, 13 years ago when I moved here. And it's still working because I've left it with a friend and he's using it. So if you look after them, man, you'll, uh, they're well worth the investment. So, yeah, man. Why would I, why do I prefer casting reels? Just I've grown up using them and... I'm really comfortable with them. I'll always generally have a spinning rod with me on the boat, just if there's a lot of wind or if I need a really subtle finesse presentation. Um, you know, and there's wind blowing. Forget it. Casting reel, casting light lures on these things is a, is a bit of a mission in the wind, you know. But, um, yeah, moving on to the rod. Now, you could use it with a spinning rod, but they're not designed for that. The reason being, um, well, first of all, you got that, pistol grip or trigger grip this rod and reel like you can see how comfortably that fits in my hand i got the line running over my finger i'm going to feel any bite usually before i see it especially on braid you'll feel a tap before you actually see your line flick and it just gives you a lot more uh kind of strength to set the hook you know less pressure on your wrist everything's nice and straight and they're designed for it man the eyes are the guides or eyes on bait casters are lower profile and generally smaller than on spinning rods and they're grouped closer together and all this does is you know it gets that line closer to the blank closer to your hand and that also improves casting distance and um, sensitivity you know so I've also snapped a few rods using <coughs> casting gear on spinning rods I don't know if it's got anything to do with the way the blank's supposed to bend I don't know you know I'm not qualified to say that I can only just say that I've broken a few and they're just not designed for the purpose, you know. So yeah, man, uh, you know, whatever brand you go for, just, you know, try to get in a shop and actually get the reel in your hand, give it a go, put it on a rod, see how it feels. I mean, I I like the Iowa, Shimano, Quantum, 13 Fishing, all great stuff. I have one bug bear, but I still buy Daiwas because they're really good. Um, the only thing that irritates me is this magnetic drag control it just gets in the way when i'm fishing because often if i set the hook i'll move it with my finger not even realizing it then the next cast is like you know a bit of a ball up 
And then the general, the basic controls on a, uh, a spinning, uh, spinning reel, casting reel. So we've spoken about that. That's the mag force, and then you got your uh, spool tension cap, which is that thing there. Can't really see it. Oh, uh, there we go. So now what that does is you tighten it up, and it creates more tension on the spool, which is generally for your pre-cast. Well, this beginning stage of your cast. You know, if you whip it out and you get a backlash immediately, you need to tighten that up. And if it's coming to the end of your cast and you're getting a <coughs> a backlash or an overwind, it's generally you need to adjust the uh, mag force, which is a bunch of magnets in there, which the higher it goes, the more you activate them and it just puts a bit more pressure on the spool to help slow it down. What I guys suggest is, uh, you know, put a kind of the lure on you're going to use or whatever, then uh, disengage the the spool and let the lure drop to the ground at a steady pace and when it lands it shouldn't overwind which yeah, is cool if you're going to be fishing and there's no wind or anything like that but it also depends how hard you're actually how much momentum you're putting into the cast and things like that man but if you're thinking of doing it go for it you won't look back man it's just such a precise way of fishing and um yeah it's just you need so much more direct contact they're way more sensitive than spinning outfits but um yeah man give it a go you know maybe you like it maybe you don't but uh yeah man fish hard fish all the time and uh tight lines for 2017